Despite its striking appearance and unique ecological role, the maned wolf is a culturally obscure species. The few depictions the animal receives often mischaracterize it as a South American equivalent of European wolves, even though its diet consists mostly of fruit. While what little focus the animal receives is largely concerned with how weird it looks, the maned wolf is now in a precarious position. While not on the verge of extinction, the species is facing mounting pressures through the exploitation of its natural environment. But before we concern ourselves with that, it's important to first recognize what the maned wolf actually is. And that's harder than you might think. Given that the species has a wolf in its name, you'd be forgiven for expecting it to be related to other wolves. But while maned wolves are canines, they're not a member of the Canina subtribe. This grouping contains nearly all other wolf species, alongside domestic dogs, jackals, coyotes, and African wild dogs. Maned wolves are actually more closely related to some fox species than they are to other wolves, as they share a subtribe with the genus Lycalopex, or the South American foxes. But while maned wolves display many fox-like characteristics, the evolutionary relationship they have with foxes is still distant. This leaves the species in a unique position, where it seemingly doesn't have all that much in common with other members of its family. But given that it's so much larger than any other South American canine, one theory suggests that it may be the only member of its genus to survive the late Pleistocene extinction. This event took place throughout much of human history, lasting from about 130,000 to 11,000 years ago. It saw the extinction of roughly a third of all species globally, or over half of the Americas. The cause of this is debated, although the most widely accepted theories suggest that it was a combination of rising global temperatures alongside increased hunting by humans. The Earth saw the end of its most recent ice age during this time, which explains, at least in part, why cold adapted species like mammoths no longer roam the Earth. But South America remained largely unglaciated throughout the ice age, with moderate temperatures that allowed the region to host a great number of species. It's more likely then that some of the maned wolf's closest relatives were hunted to extinction by humans during this period. But today, the species remains the sole member of the genus Chrysocyon, meaning golden dog. It's believed that maned wolves shared a common ancestor with the Falkland Islands wolf around 7 million years ago, but that species is also extinct as of 1876. That leaves the bush dog as the closest living relative of the maned wolf. Maned wolves are incredibly light for their size, with an average adult weight of just 23 kilograms. Even African wild dogs are bulkier than that, while grey wolves from central Russia can be three and a half times their weight. What makes the species stand out are its exceptionally long legs, which are an evolutionary adaptation to its natural habitat. The maned wolf was found primarily in tropical savannas, which are characterized by plentiful long grass. The extra height provided by the species' long legs allow it to see above this grass when hunting for prey. In the event they're not able to catch their prey immediately, maned wolves are well built to chase them down. The species' lanky proportions makes it an excellent runner, with some sources claiming that it's able to sprint at speeds exceeding 75 kilometers an hour. I can't verify this due to a lack of data, but if true, this would mean that maned wolves are not only the fastest canine, but one of the fastest species on Earth. This goes against what any list on the subject will tell you, as most exclude maned wolves but include greyhounds, which cap out at 72 kilometers an hour. Cheetahs, pronghorns, and springboks are all significantly faster, but maned wolves seem to be, bizarrely, left out here. I suspect this is due to the species' obscurity, which I'll cover in more detail later on. Mostly thanks to its legs, the maned wolf stands at an average of 90 centimeters tall at the shoulder. Of all other canines, grey wolves are their closest competitor, with a range of 80 to 85 centimeters. The tallest dog breeds like Great Danes and Irish Wolfhounds can match maned wolves in height, but often only if you don't count their extremely long ears. Standing 18 centimeters tall on its head, the maned wolf's ears are highly tuned to sound. Images of the species don't do this feature justice, as in the wild, these ears constantly rotate to listen for both prey and predators. The species' titular mane is erectile, meaning that it can be raised when displaying aggression. This enlarges the maned wolf's profile to appear more intimidating to threats, Although at just 13 centimeters in length, the mane is one of few parts of its body that's not exceptionally long. Thanks to how shy the maned wolf is, finding imagery that includes its mane rays is incredibly difficult. The species' footprint is similar to that of a dog, but it has disproportionately smaller paw pads and wider gaps between its toes. This gives the maned wolf extra balance while hunting, allowing it to sneak up on prey. That is, unless the species has recently relieved itself, 
as its urine has a strong and distinctive smell that some have likened to cannabis. It's very likely that this is due to the presence of the chemical pyrazine, which occurs in both their urine and cannabis plants. Like many species, this scent is used to mark the main dwarf's territory, but its similarity in smell once set police on a hunt for cannabis smokers in Rotterdam Zoo, only to discover the animal to be the culprit. Due to the species' elusiveness and rarity, the main dwarf's lifespan in the wild is unknown. Estimates in captivity place the average at 12 to 15 years, while the oldest known individual lived to be 22 years old in Sao Paulo Zoo. Despite its somewhat fearsome appearance, the maned wolf is not only an omnivore, but has been shown to prefer fruit and vegetables. The species even has a fruit named after it, known as the wolf apple. The tomato-like fruit is the maned wolf's most common food item, making up anywhere between 40 to 90% of its diet. Unlike other fruits that can only be eaten seasonally, the wolf apple is available throughout the year and is actively sought out by the maned wolf. Its love of this fruit means that the species participates in a number of symbiotic relationships. The main dwarf often chooses to defecate on the nests of leafcutter ants, who use the dung to fertilise their fungus gardens. They'll then discard the seeds just outside their nests, helping the wolf apple germinate. But while fruit and vegetables make up a significant portion of its diet, main dwarves still prey on a number of species. In total, over 300 food items have been recorded in the species' diet, including 116 plants and 178 animal species. Animals are more often consumed in the dry season, when fruit is less abundant. Its main prey consists of small mammals like rodents and rabbits, although they will eat fish and have even been seen jumping to catch birds in flight. Even still, only about 21% of hunts are successful, which isn't actually that low compared to many other predators. Unlike other wolves, maned wolves are not pack hunters. In this regard, they're again more similar to foxes, who are uniformly solitary predators, with the exception of the Corsac fox. When hunting, the maned wolf will tap the ground with its front paw to flush out prey. The species prefers to pounce on its prey over chasing them, biting them on the neck or back, and shaking violently if necessary. The maned wolf is a twilight animal, with peak activity occurring between 8am and 10am, and 8pm and 10pm. It uses open fields for foraging and rests in more closed areas like riparian forests. This pattern helps the species avoid being out in the sun during the hottest parts of the day, but it can be active all day when the weather is cold or cloudy. The maned wolf has three distinct calls that it uses to communicate. The species has a high-pitched whine it uses in greeting, a growl to indicate aggression, and a unique call known as a roar bark, or a rook. This rare sound sees the species make a loud call into the air, producing a significant echo. This call essentially throws the maned wolf's voice over long distances, allowing it to communicate with distant partners and rivals. Maned wolves are monogamous and mate for life, although couples remain relatively solitary of one another. Together, they may defend a shared territory of around 30 square kilometres, but outside of mating, they rarely meet. At birth, pups weigh roughly 450 grams and have black fur. This fur normally becomes red after 10 weeks, although completely black or melanistic adults do exist. This is exceptionally rare though, as the first photo of a black adult maned wolf was taken as recently as 2013. Males appear to engage in parental care more than most species, but it's still primarily done by the females. Data on male parental care has been exclusively collected from captive animals, however, so little is known about where this frequently occurs in the wild. Maned wolf pups reach sexual maturity as early as their first birthday, at which point they leave their parents' territory to set out on their own. Maned wolves don't present a significant threat to humans due to how wary and easily frightened they are. Typically, they'll try to avoid us altogether, but they have been known to snap and bite when threatened. This is often only if the animal is cornered or interrupted during mating, which is... it's fair enough, really. So long as we leave them alone though, the maned wolf doesn't really need to worry about us. Mostly. Considering the great number of prey species they have, it may come as a surprise to hear that maned wolves are not an apex predator. While it's a fair way up on the food chain, the species isn't quite at the top, as it's preyed upon occasionally by cougars and more often by the jaguar. The thing is, I think that is just a brilliant, brilliant piece of design because it's a jag. When Portuguese explorers first landed in Brazil in 1500, they identified the species as a wolf. As we know by now, this classification was inaccurate, but the name stuck along with many of the connotations that come with it. While settlers were quick to recognise that maned wolves were nowhere near as brave or strong as their European counterparts, they were still considered dangerous. Despite its diet consisting mostly of fruit and rodents, 
the species also inherited the reputation of being a livestock predator, supposedly poaching not only chickens, but sheep and cattle as well. Today, there's somewhat of a cultural divide between these European beliefs and the attitudes of local populations in South America. While most view the species as powerful and ferocious, it is not broadly perceived as a threat to humans. Urban populations are generally more sympathetic to the maned wolf than rural populations, who are more likely to view them as a pest. In some regions of Brazil, the maned wolf's teeth, heart and ears are used in local medicines to cure bronchitis, kidney disease and even as treatment for snake bites. These parts are thought to bring good luck, while in Bolivia, mounting a saddle made of maned wolf leather is believed to protect from bad luck. On a global scale, the maned wolf is an incredibly obscure species. For all of its unique traits, there's very little media covering the animal at all. This makes it all the more frustrating that one of the most notable examples gets the species so wrong. Maned wolves make an appearance in the 2018 game Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is despite the fact that the game is set in Peru, where the species has very little range, but you know, who cares, right? It's close enough. What's actually bizarre is that the shy and skittish species is instead portrayed as extremely aggressive, attacking and killing the player at a moment's notice. This kind of mischaracterization is the byproduct of limited knowledge of the species coupled with its unfortunate name. Maned wolves received a more positive portrayal in the building simulator Planet Zoo, with the release of the Grasslands Animal Pack in December of 2022. Additionally, the species has the honour of being included in the first ever episode of Deadly 60. It kind of looks like someone's taken a red fox and just stretched it. While the maned wolf is quite adaptable to a number of environments, it prefers the tropical savanna of the Cerrado, an ecoregion almost exclusive to Brazil. Around 90% of maned wolves are found here, although the species range does extend to Paraguay, Bolivia, Argentina, Uruguay, and the extreme southeast of Peru. At just shy of 2 million square kilometers, the Cerrado is a vast region. It's arguably the most biologically rich savanna in the world, hosting over 11,000 plant species, 860 bird species, and over 200 different types of mammal. The Cerrado is the second largest biome in South America, behind only the Amazon. But despite its size and biodiversity, this region is significantly threatened by industrial farming. In the last 25 years, much of the Cerrado has been cleared for eucalyptus and soy plantations. Brazil's strong agribusiness lobby has accelerated this expansion, with the production of soybeans in particular being heavily influenced by large corporations like ADM, Cargill and Bunge. By 1994, an estimated 695,000 square kilometres had already been converted into agricultural land. Today, 37.3% of the land has been totally transformed for human use, with an additional 41.4% now utilised for pasture and charcoal production. That leaves just 21.3% of the region largely untouched, which accounts for less than 500,000 square kilometres. I probably don't need to explain why this exploitation is bad for maned wolves, whose range is becoming increasingly limited. The less obvious result of this is that the species is inevitably pushed closer to human civilizations. The nearer they are to humans, the more maned wolves run the risk of being poached by farmers for killing their livestock, being struck and killed by vehicles, and contracting diseases from feral and domestic dogs. While so much of the maned wolves' territory has been lost, the fact of the matter is that its distribution is still quite broad. And while it really shouldn't be living in man-made environments, the species is more adaptable to this kind of setting than most. From 1982 to 1994, the maned wolf was given the IUCN status of vulnerable. Since 96, that's been lowered to near threatened. The maned wolf is protected from hunting in all of its native countries, and in truth, it has never been exploited to a significant level throughout history. But while humans have generally left it alone, we can't say the same for its environment. While a near threatened status is one of the least worrying we've seen so far in this series, the maned wolf is in a precarious position thanks to how isolated and fragmented its populations are. It's estimated that only around 17,000 mature individuals exist today, down from 23,000 in 2005. Those estimates are very rough thanks to the species' elusiveness, which means it could be more threatened than we think. However, conservation action is being undertaken by groups like Pro Carnivoros, a non-profit concerned with the protection of carnivore species in Brazil. Their Wolves of the Canastra project has been ongoing since 2004, and is involved in studying many aspects of the species, including ways to mitigate the potential causes of disease and illness. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Thanks for watching. Maned wolves are one of my favourite species, but there's so little coverage of them that I felt making this video was a no-brainer. And while I'm here, 
Welcome to all the new people that subscribed after my video on Bouvet Island. There's so many of you that my analytics from before are now just a flat line. I promise to do some more stuff on islands in the near future, but in the meantime I'll try to cover both bases with a video on the oceanic white tip shark, which is a species said to commonly prey on shipwreck survivors. That video will be out soon, so if you'd like to see it and you're not already subscribed, you can do so and I'll see you then.